Well, a very good afternoon and welcome to KTN Business Today. My name is Abi Agina. On the program this afternoon, we'll be taking stock of what's been happening in the insurance sector. I'll be speaking to the Chief Executive Officer for AAR, and that is Carol Munene, who will be joining us in a short while. And over and above that, we'll also be continuing with our special coverage of the demise of Kenneth Matiba. We have some reactions from business leaders who will be, will be sampling some of the tweets in a short while. And of course, a lot more from the business world. Let's take you now to some of those tweets that we shall be showing and giving you a sense of what the leaders are saying in relation to their recollections of the late Kenneth Matiba and what his demise means for corporate Kenya. Well, from the desk as well here, we do pass our condolences to the family of Matiba and may his soul rest in eternal peace. And we now want to shift gears a bit and take a look at how the markets have been performing on this Monday as the counters opened at the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Let's take a look at how the shilling has been performing against the US dollar in trading this afternoon. And well, the numbers are out and the dollar today is trading at 100.66, buying, selling at 100.86, sterling pound trading at 143.55, buying, selling at 143.86. The euro is trading at 124.05, buying, selling at 124.32. Let's take a look at the NSE performance and how the markets closed on Friday. Well, turnover stood at 3.1 billion and the shares traded was at 84 million. The NSE 20 share index was actually on an upward trajectory. It's at 3,805.23 points. And whereas the bonds traded was at 7.3 billion worth of bonds. Quite 
an active week we did see last week. Let's take a look at the most active counters now. And we have Safaricom topping the charts. There up 4.2 million worth of shares have been transacted. Equity Bank coming in second, moving just under 2 million shares. Cooperative Bank also among the top movers. We've moved 1.6 million shares. Closing off the counters, we have Kenya Commercial Bank, KCB, moving 1.55 million. Indeed, a lot of activity happening in the banking stocks. Well, this is of course linked to the results season as more and more investors continue to buy in on the various stocks. Well, that's a quick look at the markets this afternoon and we we'll definitely continue monitoring how the markets will be closing. Let's take a look at our Twitter poll question for today and we're asking you, do you think that politics played a part in the dwindling fortunes of Matiba's business empire? You can share with us your feedback using our Twitter handle at KT News. You can also tweet me at Agina Abi. Remember to use the hashtag KTN Business. Well, that is our Twitter poll question. And let me quickly recap it. Do you think that politics played a part in the dwindling fortunes of Matiba's business empire? I can see already tweets coming in thick and fast, and we'll be able to sample them just before we take a break. But for now, Let's get you tweeting and your views on this. Away from that, we want to talk matters agribusiness now and some good news indeed for cattle farmers as they are among those that will be smiling all the way to the bank after Brookside Dairies announced an increase in milk producer prices. This comes after several parts of the country have been experiencing abundant rainfall, thereby adding an incentive to farmers to enable them cultivate fodder, crops and pasture grasses to be used as animal feed during the dry season. Brookside's milk procurement director, John Gethy, says that the new producer prices were meant to enable raw milk suppliers to set up animal feed plots on their farms and urged all farmers to redouble their energy towards sustainable farming by reserving portions of their farms for cultivation of animal feeds. Gethi added that the farm would continue to procure all milk supplied by its contracted suppliers in spite of anticipated rise in production due to the current rains. The increased prices of milk went up to 11 shillings per kilo delivered beginning this week, which will see Brookside pay up to 37 shillings per kilo of milk delivered by its contracted farmers. It would also signal a tough fight for control of Kenya's raw milk market, estimated to be over 5 billion litres per annum. According to the Kenya Dairy Board, the first quarter of this year indicates that the volume of milk went up by 25% from 47.9 million kilograms in January to 60.2 million kilograms last month. Well, some good news there for Kenyans as we anticipate cheaper milk prices at the supermarket. Moving on, the Kenyan banking system has witnessed a challenging operating environment after the interest caps rose with tighter regulations in a report released by Cyton Investment Company, this has caused a decline of 1% in core earnings in 2017 compared to the market weight growth of 4.4% in 2016. Equally, deposits were noticed growing at a faster rate than loans at 11.6% compared to loans at 5.6% a slower growth than the five-year average of 12.5%. However, the level of non-performing loans remains a concern in the banking sector. So we saw banks try to become more efficient, and one way they tried to do this was by lowering costs. So they lay, we saw a lot of um, staff being laid off, around 1,620 employees in the banking sector, as far as we could count, and also closure of branches just to decrease their operating costs. So we saw 39 branches also being closed last year. The banking sector is uh, trading at a higher valuation than the insurance sector, which is at 1.5. Uh, but both are still uh, currently below the historical averages of two times for the banking sector and 1.7 for the insurance sector. In terms of earnings, we saw a decline this year uh, because of a decline in net interest income uh, owing to the cap. Deposits, however, deposit uh, mobilization and growth remain strong at 11.6 percent. However, more of the funds are being channeled to government securities uh, than being dished out as loans because the loan growth came at 5.6, which is lower than the historical average of 12.5.